Right, so I'm doing a little bit of experimentation here. I noticed this mark on the map in the abyss that looks awfully like a door. And then I remembered, oh, there was a blue dais here. You know what else is blue and what's gathered around here? This blue goo butterfly stuff. So I figured, why not come here with Joni's blessing equipped? since that turns all of my health pips into armor pips, and it seems that is exactly what I needed to do. Almost. Oh, you tricky game, you. Okay, I see what I'm missing. Not only do I need Joni's Blessing, but I need that one other charm as well. I think it was just called Lifeblood Charm. The one that gave me two extra armor pips. You have to come here with maximum possible armor. And I'm assuming you can only do that with this charm combination, that you can't just gather enough from the world, although maybe you can. Uh... Oh, I'm gonna have to get rid of the King's Soul to do this. I want to keep that equipped at all times, just to be safe, but yeah. So now I should have enough armor pips to actually open up that door. That's a, a nice little secret there, and I can't believe I actually figured that out on my own. I usually just kind of brush past these things like an idiot. But hey, occasionally, even I have my moments of cleverness. Of course, now I actually have to get back down there without taking any damage. I did that just fine the first time, but you never know. Here I am again. That didn't take too long, thankfully, so now the door should open. I have to sit and watch this animation slowly play out again. That's a bit annoying. But... Bingo! But bingo, my favorite pastime. Okay, let's see what's behind here. It better be something good. Having forced me to go through that effort to enter here. It's actually its own little area with platforming and spikes and such. I wasn't expecting that. Ooh. And the platforming is a little bit trickier than I initially perceived. I'll have to be careful here. Especially since, who knows, there might be a door further inside that requires me to be at full armor to access. I'd imagine they wouldn't be that cruel, but you never know. Wait, where am I supposed to go now? Is it down there? Yes, it is. What is going to lie at the bottom of all this, I wonder? Oh, Path Divergence. Does it, uh, does it matter which one I take? I guess I'll go with the left one first. Oh dear, hopefully I don't need to make it to the end with full armor. Cause, uh, I've already failed that. Uh... Okay then, was that just the exit and I chose the wrong path, or what was that about? That's kind of annoying, I have to go through this bullshit again. I mean, it's not even difficult, I'm not even um close to dying here, it's just busy work. Maybe I'd be having more trouble if I had come here before doing the white palace, but that was my trial by fire with mastering the platforming in this. So nothing like that will ever bother me unduly again. See, so yeah, I guess I'll take the right path this time and hopefully that won't just boot me out of the dream. Or this area. I said the dream because that sort of vanishing effect is kind of similar to what happens when you exit from one of the dreams. Lifeblood Core. And then it just boots you out again anyway, so that extra path over there is just... It's kind of a trap. You don't want to take that. Hopefully there wasn't anything past the lifeblood core that I could have examined, so let's see what that's about. Three charms contains a living core that bleeds precious lifeblood. Or three notches, rather. When resting, the bearer will gain a coating of lifeblood that protects from a large amount of damage. Okay, so when it says a barrier that guards against a large amount of damage, that just means more armor points. Wow. How many 
pips is that three it's it's hard to count them my um my eyes are just running into each other here six nine twelve fifteen I think that's 19 if I'm counting correctly. Wow. This might actually not be all that bad of a setup for the arena, just having a huge pool of armor. Really, it depends on how good you are at avoiding hits. Okay, well, heading to the shadow wall that's in the kingdom's edge, I realize I missed this thing over here. Ah, it's just a wanderer's journal, though. How many of those in the other collectibles do I actually have at this point? Four, six, three, and two. Well, the uh, the shopkeeps would be pretty happy who have a lot of ancient history to study. I guess I'll return to him uh, after I've explored everything else. Because maybe he'll give me something and hey! Ah, I was right, there was at least one more warrior's grave out in the world. That seems to be all that's over here. Hopefully my charm setup is good for this. You have come a long way just to die here at the edge of the world. No, do not speak. I have heard thousands and thousands of empty words from those like you. Your pride, your desires, your desperation. You will take these things with you once I strike you down. Raise your weapon then and die like those who came before you. Alright then, time to knock him down a peg. Try out Great Slash, maybe that'll help, especially since he has a shield, so I'm gonna have limited opportunities to actually strike him. Whoa! Maybe I should just go with the span, that's actually, I think, a little bit better. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not doing too well here. Ooh, those come up quickly enough. Okay, I do have a chance to heal sometimes, when he does this attack, for example. That leaves him vulnerable for quite a while. Yeah, I'm just gonna rely on regular attacks. Great slashes might be better, but I feel like spamming is better for me. Because I never have confirmed if it's damage against these guys or number of hits. Hmm, I should heal up. Oop, that was close. Okay, yeah, these are not nearly as deadly as I thought. As long as I focus on avoiding them, it's pretty easy to avoid taking damage. It's because I was focused on... Whoa, what was that? What did I get hit by there? Uh, anyway, it's because I was focused on damaging him as well that I was getting hurt so much. Yeah, I have no idea what hit me there that one time. It must have been a spear that I just failed to see. Speaking of which, oh dear. Now they're coming in a little bit faster, which means I should be near the end of the trial. Oh, he also has two shields. Now he has one always around him, and then one that he sends out to attack me. Okay, I really need to end this. Can I just spam him to death? Uh, no, that's a mistake. That's always a mistake. Whenever I try that, I end up taking way more damage than I end up dealing to the enemy. It's never worth it to try. I'm just gonna wait for my next chance to heal, and I should be far enough away that he doesn't even have a chance to hit me. I'm just gonna focus on restoring my HP here. Okay. Now I can go for hits with relative safety. Yeah, very few opportunities to actually strike him because of those dual shields. I really hope he doesn't get a third. That would be a real pain in the ass to deal with. Uh, just gonna heal up here, be safe. Yeah, this might be one of the tougher warrior trials I've found so far. Just uh, a whole lot of shit you have to deal with in, in a quick amount of time because of how quickly he attacks. At the same time, the pace is measured enough that I'm not getting destroyed immediately like I was with, say, the tennis ball one. That one just, just destroyed me immediately, but then on my second attempt, or was it third, I forget, I took him down pretty easily. A different sort of challenge than what this one offers. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Come on, heal up at least once more. Twice? Okay, I'm good. Yeah, part of the difficulty with these trials, and really the bosses in general, is that you have no idea how much progress you're actually making. You can't see their HP. Which means if they're at low HP, you can't just go in in a berserker frenzy hoping to finish them off, because for all you know, they could still have most of their life left, and it wouldn't be a worthy trade. 
Never have I been defeated in combat. I can see myself there, still sleeping. How long have I been hidden here? Here at the edge of the world, no one could find me, except you. Warriors, knights, kings, even time itself, they have no power over me. Only you. You are the darkness, come to consume me. Well, you read about that. Nom nom nom. Tasty essence lunchtime. And hey, I now have enough to finally finish off the Sia's stuff. Fantastic. So much essence, so bright. You truly are the wielder my tribe so long has dreamed of. The folk of my tribe were born from a light. Light similar to essence, similar to that powerful blade, though much brighter still. They were content to bask in the light and honored it. For a time. But another light appeared in our world. A worm that took the form of a king. How fickle my ancestors must have been. They forsook the light that spawned them, turned their backs to it, forgot it even. And so this kingdom was born from that betrayal. But the memories of that ancient light still lingered, hush whispers of faith, until all of Hollowness began to dream of that forgotten light. Ah, but what's done is done, and so am I. The wielder has at last appeared and I've held the memories of my tribe for long enough. It is time for us to be forgotten too. Don't remember us, wielder. Don't honor us. We do not deserve it. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. Light. Radiance. I remember you. Ascension. Okay, so no actual itemary or monetary reward, but instead a lore reward. So that actually clears up a few things. So yeah, the mighty king that they all worship that very few people know what he looked like is in fact the worm. The same one that I got the king's mark from? Who can say? But it was a giant insect creature and it brought with it a light that their tribe decided to go with forsaking the light that birthed them. I'm assuming the light that birthed them is meant to be the essence, and, uh, or maybe slash the soul. I think they might be kind of the same thing, it's hard to say. And that the light that the king brought is that orange corrupting stuff, and that's why the people that end up getting super corrupted, such as those worshippers in that one chapel, end up mentioning the light and the warmth in their thoughts. And so, as mighty of a kingdom of Hollowness was, it was ultimately doomed to fail since it was founded on that worm's light. Which was not exactly a good light. I guess. That seems to be what happened in the past. Still not entirely sure what the other stuff is, like exactly what I am, what Hornet is supposed to be, what I assume that the queen, that white lady, was supposed to be, but um... It seems like I understand the major bits of the backstory, and I'm sure more stuff will become clear when I actually proceed into the final area. So, since it's pretty much the only thing I have left to do other than trying to return to the initial area of the game with the King's Soul equipped. Uh, that and returning to the merchant and seeing if he has anything to offer me if I give him more of this stuff. The only thing I have left to do is the final trial of the Colosseum of Fools. And at this point, I'm about as strong as I possibly could be. Alright, now we have the Super Wizard, don't we? Yeah, the, or the Electro Wizard, I guess I'll call him. Who I almost managed to deal with last time, and I would have if not for a little bit of a platforming gaff. Wow. Yeah, I was probably so close to killing him last time, like one hit away. Honestly, I think the regular mages might actually be more dangerous. Oh, another Electro Wizard. That's fine. As long as I keep moving and don't go to a spot I was just in, he can't do jack shit. Oh, 
I was gonna say, how long does it take till I fight two of these guys at once? And what do you know? Oh. No, 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 no. Oh wow, it's been a while since I fought these assholes. I shouldn't let them spit too much, otherwise they're gonna take up all of the arena, which they kind of already have, a little bit. Oh boy, how am I going to take these guys down without taking damage? That's going to be tricky. I need to get in quick enough to bait out their melee strike so I can actually get in a moment edgewise. Oh, that did not go how I had hoped. I killed one of them, I think. Alright, with only one left, it should be easy enough to take down the remainder. Yep, okay, come on, heal up. Now I only got the one. And now I got a flying asshole to deal with. Honestly though, this guy doesn't synergize too terribly with the guys on the ground. They don't really work well together, thankfully. Shit. That is a new enemy type. Oh, and they are an asshole. A is for asshole, C is for champion, which I will totally be, come on. Heal, heal, heal. Oh, oh what is this bullcrap? What? Oh, okay. <laughs> for a second there was like, oh no, it's not just gonna kill me, is it? Thankfully, no. Oh, what? How did I fail to move properly? I'm gonna blame the frame rate on that. Yeah, blame the flame rate. All them damn gay bugs. Uh, oh no, not spikes, no. I'm dead. I'm not gonna survive. Holy crap! The third trial is absolutely insane. Yeah, I don't even... I think maybe the wizard round was half... halfway? Holy crap! I might have to rethink my charm setup a little bit, although I'm not entirely sure what would be better. I really do think I need the fragile strength equipped. If it took any longer to take out those enemies than it did there with it equipped, I would stand no chance. I, I need that. There's no question. And honestly, my other charms do work pretty well together. Admittedly, later on when I'm trying to focus on healing, I don't get to use my spells as much. But really, if I were to use my spells more in the first place, especially if I were to say conserve a large amount of soul for the later rounds, when I directly go in, and then use that to use magic at the beginning, I would probably avoid taking damage in the first place. And thus, that would be a more efficient way of using my soul. Okay, Mr. Historian, have I got a bunch of shit to offload on you? That sounded dirtier than I intended. Have you visited the remnants of his palace? It's down below the city, in the bedrock of the kingdom. Must have been an impressive sight in its time. Now there's nothing left. It's a strange thing, though, 
There were no signs of conflict around the area. It's as though the whole place just vanished. Velmi Arcus. Boris' son, Gian. I've often wondered the true visage of the king. Depictions are of an imposing, gleaming figure in a fiercely horned crown. I suspect there's much embellishment in the imagery, though. A ruler seeking worship tends to hide their blemishes. It'd do no good to appear a common bug. Velmi Arcus. Velmi Arcus. Velmi Arcus. Boris' son, Gian. An arcane egg, eh? Now this, this is an ancient thing. These relics are the prize of my profession. There's knowledge hidden within, though it's very difficult, painstaking work to extract. One large understanding can be gleaned, though. This civilization may claim itself the first, but something did exist within this place before Hollow Nest. Each egg offers a narrow glimpse into that forgotten age. Velmi Arcus. Velmi Arcus. It's a rare chance to own two of these. I'll be the envy of all my colleagues, though my purse is feeling much lighter for it. These eggs are the most desired find from time before Hollow Nest, but they're not the only remnant of that age. You may have come upon them, those old statues that seem a store for soul. They too prove its existence, though in a larger, cruder form. Alright, it's probably uh, more arcane eggs that I've missed that I could offer him for lore tidbits, but that's all I got for now. And uh, might as well check in on everyone here while I'm around. Precept 10, keep your weapon sharp. I make sure that my weapon, Life Ender, is kept well sharpened at all times. This makes it much easier to cut things. Good advice, Zote. Good advice. It's been a while since I've talked to a Zelda. Whose shop this building is not. This is it, I think. Oh! And Cornifer is finally back and sleeping, I guess because I've explored all of the areas, and so is he. He's done with his mapping quest. <sighs> Cornifer's home at last, but look at him, he's exhausted. He always does this, furiously charts a place, then collapses once he's done. He'll be sleeping for some time, I imagine, so even with him home, I'm still lost his company. Ah, uh, but I do love the bug, even his faults. Seeing his passion for maps, it's something of an inspiration. Corny keeps asking me to join him on his adventures, and I've always declined. Maybe next time I should accept the offer? Ah, I'm glad, like, nothing bad ever happened to them. That's one Dark Souls influence that this game seems to be absent from. Damn, so nothing happens if you return here. Okay, so since returning to the start of the game turned out to be a bust, I figured I'd do a little bit exploration of exploration. And see where it is exactly I can use the King's Soul, and I figured that the Abyss would be a pretty good place to start. For one, because of that room on the bottom left edge that had apparently nothing going on with it despite it being its own distinct thing with its own distinct visuals. Clearly that's important for something, and at this point of the game, when I've done most everything else, I can't imagine what it could be for other than for an interaction with the King's Soul. Now that could end up very well being the case that it does have nothing to do with the King's Soul, but while I'm still looking for where to use the King's Soul, I figured that would be as good a place to start as any. Plus. I don't really remember a lot of the dialogue in this game because like a lot of it concerns events that like I don't really know about and thus a lot of what's said is meaningless. I guess that's how most people feel when um, Dark Souls lore is described to them or they talk to the NPCs in the Dark Souls games. That didn't happen before. Is that what having the King's Soul Badge does? Oh, charm. 
Let me just uh, head over to this room to make sure nothing happens over here. Okay, well, my line of reasoning was incorrect, but it still led me to the place I needed to be, so hey. I'll count that as a victory for myself. But yeah, I, I was gonna say, didn't, um... I think it was Hornet refer to the Abyss as being my birthplace or something like that when I exited it. I don't quite remember, but I feel like that's a thing that she did. So yeah, time to check that path downwards. There's more to this area than meets the eye. More than meets the eye. Oh, this place is made entirely of corpses. That's, uh, that's pleasant. Oh, and there's nothing but ghosts here. Ghosts pretty similar to mine. Do I have to kill them? I feel like that might be something I need to do at some point if I want to proceed. Maybe not, though. Hmm, I can't tell if I'm acquiring soul for killing them. Mainly because, you know, I have full soul. But usually you get that white glow that goes into your character, don't you? Or into your weapon or something like that. And that doesn't seem to be happening here. Okay, I'm proceeding further down than I thought I would be. Let me check what's past the shadow gate. I thought that that would be progress, but maybe not. Oh, there's actually nothing over here. Well, if I do have to kill all those ghosts, I'm glad that I've done that. That way I don't have to check all the way back to the top after making it all the way to the bottom. Nope. Oh. Spikes. That inclusion is especially annoying since they don't really distinguish themselves from the rest of the environment. Since everything is kind of spiky. Hmm, let me check back here first. Ah, good thing I did. Hey, it's another arcane egg. I got something from my historian, buddy. I forget, what was the uh, lore behind these items? Weren't they things that were around before the creation of Hollow Nest? Yeah, they were from the previous civilization, so they don't... God damn it have anything directly to do with the hollow nest or the worm or the kingdom or anything like that. Oh yeah, another realization I had while I was thinking about the things I've done. Uh, so someone mentioned that the king's palace, it used to exist like down below and then it just suddenly disappeared. It left nothing behind. It was like it just vanished and I'm guessing that the white palace was probably the king's palace or at least a memory thereof. In which case, the uh, the bug in the throne at the very end of it was probably the king. The king who looks, who looked pretty similar to me, I'm pretty sure. That's another random thing I realized. Okay, yeah, killing all of these ghosts is definitely something I have to do. Otherwise, why would they include them off in their own rooms? I guess these are all other adventurers who made it to this point. Other vessels, really. Oh, what? Hey, they're good looking. How's it hanging? Okay, so what do I want to do with this thing? Do I want to strike it with the regular nail? Or perhaps the dream nail? See, so yeah, this is like a, a giant arcane egg, so presumably this is what the arcane eggs that have like writing on them are based off of. Is this my birthplace? Credits roll. <laughs> that, that would be an interesting- whoa! Uh, I don't think this audio is controlled by any of the mute the audio sliders because uh, that was incredibly loud. Holy shit. No cost too great. I think that was a line of dialogue said somewhere before. Nope. I'm 
I'm still alive. No, don't bury me. Okay, well, this is interesting. I'm in the abyss, but things are definitely different now. The paths to the left and probably the right seem to be closed off. I have no choice but to ascend, so is this the abyss reconfigured by my actions? No enemies left either, it looks like. Or is it a dream? No mind to think. Ooh, now we've got the angelic music playing. The epic Latin choir. That's probably not an actual choir, just one generated by a music program, because actual choirs are expensive to hire. And that would be way out of the budget of an indie game like this. I think it made like 60 to 70k on Kickstarter. I'm sure hiring a choir would wipe out half or more of that budget. No voice to cry suffering. Born of God and Void. <gasps> it's me! You shall seal the blinding light that plagues their dreams. You are the vessel. You are the hollow knight. Hey, title drop. Collected the void hat and the void achievement. Cool. So I'm guessing that was like a weird memory flashback sort of thing. I'm I'm pretty sure design-wise that that uh, other insect that walked away first was the white lady. You know, except not all like giant and huge and entangled and everything. So I'm guessing that was the queen, which means the uh, other me there was probably the king. So I'm related to the king in some fashion, definitely. I think I said that that was probably the case before. Uh... I might just have to go through the game again once I have a slightly better context of things to truly have an understanding. I thought that would look up a YouTube video. I feel like this is the kind of thing that would have inspired at least someone to make a lore video about this game. Isn't there like a, a YouTube channel that's all about lore in video games that aren't Dark Souls, the lore hunter? Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Okay, so let's see what I have. What the Void Hot does. Oh wow, it takes way less notches. I hope the effect hasn't been diminished. An emptiness that was hidden within, now unconstrained, unifies the Void under the Bearer's will. This charm is a part of its Bearer and cannot be unequipped. Oh, it requires no charm notches at all, it's always there. Ah, uh, question, does it still infinitely regenerate soul? If not, I kind of wish I hadn't done that because that actually was a pretty useful effect. Something I was hoping to make use of in the Colosseum and yep, that effect is gone. That's kind of a poor bit of design. Like the fact that they just straight up get rid of that charm, a charm that is pretty useful. Well, oh well. I had to do this at some point for completion. 